Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Greg Lockmiller. Uh, I work for NetApp. I'm in a cloud solutions group. I've been with NetApp for about eight, eight years, working in various roles. Wanted to share with you guys today a little bit about you know, sender volume types uh, and some ways you can use them to match your workloads with storage capacity, storage performance. How many people are familiar with the sender volume types? OK. We'll go through some slides about how we expose some of the technology with uh, cluster data on top. And we've got a brief demo that we can look at or you know, go through real quick and show certain examples of how we expose uh, the NetApp technology up through to the sender volumes with our driver. So let's talk a little bit about what that is. Uh, again, match the workload with the storage. Some of the things I hear with customers is the ability to match that workload. Um, you know, like most technical people, you know, when I go get a new laptop, I want an SSD. And I want to put everything you know, for fast access on an SSD drive. But maybe pictures or other things I'll put on a USB spinning media. So, you know, the, the concept here is being able to match your workload to your storage. You know, do you have workloads that require low latency and high performance? Or, for example, do you have workloads that are they're there and they just need to be serviced? A uh, little bit overview about the sender and the block storage and volume types. Uh, how we implement them within the NetApp driver and some things that we can share with you and how you can use that to your advantage. And a little bit to how, how you differentiate that. And that goes back to the first bullet item, matching the workload with the storage. And we've got a brief demo. And, and if we can get through that, that would be great. If not, I understand. So we'll get into it. So matching the workload with the storage. Obviously, different workloads require different SLAs. Uh, I've come from a database space, and everybody wants the fastest workload possible with the least amount of latency. And that doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be databases, but it can be app servers or anything to do with DevOps or maybe a CI environment, too. So it's the ability to differentiate on the sender back end when your tenants create sender volumes, what storage is available to them, and what performance characteristics that they can select or what you provide as a cloud administrator. And typically, how some of this gets set up is working with your storage administrator and your cloud administrator and what you want to make available to your tenants. It also provides you for greater efficiencies. Um, again, coming from the database space, maybe I'd have a database that was a terabyte in size. And um, I would always ask for five terabytes. You know, I never wanted to run out of space for my customers who were my you know, consumers of the database infrastructure. And, and of that terabyte size in database, yeah, maybe only 500 gig was really active data. So it was always the purpose of oversubscribing for uh, my workloads for my databases. And so when we talk about provide greater efficiencies, there's some technology within cluster data on tap, the OS for the storage, that we expose up through the sender driver, the NetApp driver. And that really goes along with some of the other features that we expose to, and we're going to talk about that. So it allows your tenants or your cloud administrator to provide features uh, that align with your architecture standards, that align with your cost, as well as how you can charge back to your tenants. So what are, what are volume types? I won't spend too much time here. You guys already know that. It's criteria used to how to define a particular service and how they use that storage. So for example, again, I'll go back to the database example. I want high performance. So maybe I want to send her back in to provision my volumes, my block of storage volumes, on storage that is high performance, you know, lots of memory, lots of spinning media or SSDs, things like that. Uh, and we do this by utilizing key pairs. And it's the extra spec feature of the sender as well as how we expose some new extra specs with the sender driver from NetApp. So again, it, it's utilized, it's created by your cloud administrator, and it's utilized by your tenants, your end users. So go back to uh, an example here. Uh, the technology here, we call it FlexFall. So just for uh, tech, you know, the taxonomy here, being able to understand what FlexFall means, that is a storage object within uh, data on top. So maybe you have a, uh, a need for deduplication. Maybe you have um, the need to store lots of uh, ISO images or OSs. Those typically dedupe pretty well. So maybe you want to create a, a sender volume using the surfacing up the NetApp technology and maybe using that with Glance. So now you have the ability to store many different templates and libraries for Glance, and you get dedupe capability. It also works in terms of data points within applications. Maybe I have a cinder block storage for an application that has many PDFs. Uh, how many people go online and look at their cellular wireless bills? 
and they come up as PDFs a lot of times. A lot of times those are stored in, in somewhat like object stores or in file systems associated across you know, the different geographical areas and replicated. Another uh, opportunity for high performance would be maybe I want to use flash storage or different uh, disk drives. I want to be able to surface up the use of SSDs or certain types of SAS drives. Uh, maybe I want to put this particular back in and this volume on high performance hardware. Uh, I know it, as all storage vendors, we all have different uh, levels of hardware, right? You've got the top end to entry level. So maybe you have a cloud environment with an entry level storage hardware that you want to use for DevOps. So you can, you can associate, again, the t your total cost of ownership and your return on investment in your hardware with how people use it within your cloud, too. And then finally, what about um, does anybody have concerns about quality of service, being able to limit somebody from having runaway type applications? So we also surface up the NetApp uh, quality of service feature from the storage, too. So you can use that within your sender driver. And then data protection. We have a product like, like any storage vendor, to be honest with you, SnapMirror. So you can replicate your data, uh, again, from different geographical data centers or within the same data center or even within the same cluster. So you have the ability to define not only your quality of service, but being able to say, I want to create a cinder block storage volume, and I want it to be part of an environment that's replicated for snap mirroring. And we'll show you an example of that, walk through how it's created, and show you exactly it, it gets placed onto a backend, an NFS backend that's snap mirrored. And we'll show you on the storage that it's part of a snap mirror relationship. So volume types are arbitrary. There's no set rhyme or reason. It's whatever you want them to be. And what we do, I, it's kind of hard to see, but th this will be available post-Summit. But you have the ability to use different types of NetApp extra specs that are specific to our driver. So you can use RAID type, disk type. I can define a quality of service, and I want to use quality of service. I can say, I want this to be uh, a thin provisioned, or I want it to be compressed, or I want dedo. So we surface up that technology through the driver through extra specs. And that's how we bring that to bear. We make that technology available through the use of extra specs. And again, the cloud administrator and the tenants can use those accordingly. So again, maybe you have, um, maybe you want to define a particular storage type. We just use gold, silver, and bronze here. It could be tier one, tier two, tier three, um, it, whatever might r provide the right particular naming convention with your infrastructure and your ecosystem. But in, you know, in this example, in the gold, we want to make sure it's part of high performance. We want backups on an hourly basis. Maybe that data is worth being backed up. So maybe that's something that you can offer out to uh, uh, as a private cloud to your line of business, to your tenants, or even as a service provider using the storage on your back end. It can be replicated. I just spoke about SnapMirror. So being able to replicate that data. And then obviously highly available. And what we mean by there is being able to take advantage of the clustering technology, be, which is part of the data on tap and part of our uh, environments. So maybe Silver. Maybe I dedupe, but I still back it up, and I still, I still replicate it. Uh, maybe I have different SLAs, and so I can manage the SLAs to the back-end storage and then also surface up some of the technology within NetApp. And maybe bronze, thin provision. Think about some of the data that um, it's not permanent. Maybe it's there for a couple of days, or maybe it's there for three days. You thin provision it, put it on SATA spinning media, for example, or some low-cost media and get a higher return on investment. So again, as a technical guy, you know, I, I like the SSDs on my laptop. I got uh, SSDs in a device at home. I put the critical stuff on there for speed that I want, right? So maybe in a bronze type level or a tier three, eh, let's just put uh, things on there I don't care about for high performance or latency type things. So it all depends on the SLA that you're trying to provide to your customers. Uh, another example, too, would be like in gold. So another example, too, maybe you use different volume types and you can use a database. Maybe you have a database that you want to put. Or maybe you have uh, an, enterprise, uh, an enterprise CRM type application that you want to put into the cloud and you want some very high-end storage. Uh, so again, the names are arbitrary. The volume types can be how you need them to be. And you know, that's the great flexibility about OpenStack and being a cloud administrator and offering these type of things to your customers. Now, not all of this is just NetApp. Some of this is available in the sender, base sender driver today. So hopefully, you know, there's some information there that you can take back and use, even with an OpenStack deployment, using non-NetApp storage. 
The NetApp storage features are these right here that provide you know, the features of thin provisioning, dedupe, compression. And then you can define different backends, even to define, uh, can point them back in to a high-end storage device to a low-end storage device. So real quick example, uh, how, do, how do volume types affect volume provisioning? Again, maybe um, with Cinder, you have a couple of different backends defined. And obviously, the scheduler is going to look at uh, what's the available capacity, what's the uh, capabilities, the type of filtering that the scheduler does. Our driver will report back some of the things that make that decision possible for Cinder. But maybe we have an extra spec that says, well, I need something to be placed on dedupe. And our driver picks that up, identifies the appropriate uh, back end and the uh, storage entities associated to those back ends to provide that capability. So it would provision it. You want dedupe, and it's going to provision it in back end B because back end B has flex files and storage entities with deduplication turned on. Maybe uh, sender back end A doesn't have any of the deduplication turned on. So that, that's some of the NetUp driver feature set. So here's some of the extra specs. I, you know, this is an eye chart and a little, I don't want to go through it and I don't want to, you know, read through any of it, but just think about the extra specs capability I've already talked about, uh, RAID type, uh, disk type. So maybe that, that's an interesting one where maybe you want your provisioning to be on SSDs or SATA drives or SAS drives. Thin provision, um, be able to limit that candidate volume list to only supports thin provision. You know, what volumes have thin provision turned on? And then deduke, we've talked about that quite a bit. So in the next, uh, next screen, some of the other extra specs that we have available too, being snap mirror compression, thick provision, policy group. And, and again, that's pretty important because you can define some back end with multiple policy groups. And, and uh, with us, that's at a file level. So if you create a sender volume, it's at the file level. So now you can define some quality of service type metrics within that sender uh, block storage device. So another use case here, maybe gold is a disk type SSD, thin, thick provisioned. In other words, I want to make sure space guarantee is complete. I don't want to thin provision anything. Uh, silver, quality of service, uh, got a, a typo. Uh, QS policy group, something that's defined on the storage back end. You associate that to your extra specs. And then your uh, scheduler and the NetApp driver will say, OK, I need to go put it there because that's got the policy group associated to it. And then finally, bronze, maybe it's, again, SATA drives, entry-level hardware, and I just defined a particular back end. Now, one of the things, too, again, we talk about different types of semantics here, but these are just different types of volume types. Uh, maybe, you know, temporary type block storage, something that's not there very long. Think about DevOps, in and out, things that are done for a day, less than a day. Thin provision, don't take up any space. You can oversubscribe your storage infrastructure and be in a, in a pretty safe place there and get more return on your investment. But these, these particular volume types, again, it's just arbitrary, whatever you want them to be. And uh, a couple of things in regards to this, it, these are all NetApp pieces, that extra specs that are part of the driver, but this is also just part of Cinder right here, right? Storage protocol, volume back end name. Uh, we support iSCSI and NFS for, uh, for our back end and for our driver. So I want to go into a quick demo. Hopefully it won't glaze your eyes or anything, but it's a recorded demo, and we'll spin through it real quick, show you a little bit about uh, this particular environment, go through some of the volume type creation so you can see the command line, how it's done, command line, how we um, provision a, a, an object, a sender object, and then kind of say, did it really go where we want it to go? Are we just kind of showing it off, or is it really, it, it's in action, and one of them that we'll show particular is about mirroring and show you where the mirroring goes. Bear with me while I go ahead and start this up. So just to give you an example, what backends I have defined, I've got um, NFS, bronze, gold, silver, iSCSI, uh, the particular one we're working on a lot was called C.NFS1 as a backend. And these are what's NFS mounted, the file system used by the backends. And I'll show you a little bit here about the file systems that are mounted. So this is part of the sender.conf uh, definition where you link to it. These are the file systems. 
And so it, this is pretty quick, and I apologize because of the lack of time, but we're creating different um, volume types right here. So in this example, I just created gold, silver, and bronze. Now I'll associate back ends to them so you can see how that's done. And all we're doing here is saying, well, okay, I've got, a, I've got a type of gold, silver, and bronze, and I've associated very specific pre-configured cinder backends to them. And I'll show you the extra specs here in this particular example. So in this case, you know, in a cinder command line, if, you, if I was a tenant and I had Horizon and using the GUI, I would see these as available in volume type in the dropdown. So we'll move through the demo as quickly as we can. Um, another thing to set here I call 7 mode. We have two different types of uh, storage operating systems. So we'll do 7 mode and C dot. Uh, so we're setting 7 mode here. I've now, I'm, now I'm exposing some of the NetApp uh, technology. I've created a type com uh, comp that's for compression. And now we're to set the NetApp underscore compression to true. And so if I created a volume of type comp, it would look for a flex fall or a storage backend that had compression enabled. Another one here for mirror. I set mirror up. I define it. I give it a backend uh, or a variable netapp underscore mirror equal to true. So now I have the ability to create a volume type of mirror. And now I do another one for thin. And thin provisioning is what that's looking for. And I'm turning on the netapp value of thin provisioning to true. So I've created all of these different types of extra specs utilizing the NetApp features. One thing about the NetApp quality of service feature, I can combine both front-end and front-end Cinder QoS along with NetApp QoS. And, and this particular example here where it's called OpenStack Dev, that's my quality, uh, QoS policy group on the storage. And I'm going to assign that to a particular backend in this case. So we'll list all the extra specs here, and we're going to go into with what little time we've got left, to kind of show you the mirror example. I'll, I'll fast forward into it. I'm pretty sure we're coming up to it here. Again, another list of the extra specs. Uh, I want to stop that real quick and kind of um, give you an example. So this is what it would look like if you were a cloud admin or even as a tenant and you had the ability to run that. And it show you, it'll show you some of the extra specs over here. Again, volume back in name is just part of Cinder. And then NetApp dedupe, for example. NetApp thin provisioned. NetApp mirrored, NetApp compression. Again, those are extra specs exposed by our driver. So I'm just creating some quick volumes here. Uh, volume type gold, there's thin. Again, no different, um, seven mode, because I want it to go to a particular type of storage controller in OS. Um, now the QoS is being created. And so all of these are created based on the volume types we just created. And again, all of this is done by the GUI. Um, wanted to go through command line, being a uh, again, being a low-level guy, I like command line versus GUI. So we're going to validate the QoS here just to let you know what happened. So we're going to the controller here, and we've created a QoS um, sender object. And I'm going into a particular mode within the storage OS, and I'm going to show you that that workload for that file is monitored by this QoS policy group. So let me stop this one real quick. Whoops, let me go back, sorry. Come on, stop. Oh, well. I can't get it to sync up. So what, what it does with uh, what I was going to show you with uh, the NetApp C dot feature is it shows that particular sender block storage volume being monitored with a QoS policy group. So here we're creating a mirror volume. And we'll get into uh, the back end in the next couple of steps, creating a cinder volume, we want to make it be replicated. We want that particular cinder block storage that's associated to be part of a replicated environment. We're going to find it. Get that out of the way. We'll find it in the file system. All of this is NFS. So we'll find it in the file system. We'll locate it. I want to find this particular object. It's in the file system. Then we'll show you which, um, which particular NFS server is serving that up. And this is the last piece of it. We just got about 10 seconds. So this is the NFS server. I defined it so it's got mirroring defined as part of the name so we can find it. And then finally, we're going to confirm that that particular object is part of a SnapMirror relationship. 
And all I did was do a snap, it's effectively a status of a snap mirror replicated environment. And finally, we see that this particular file system and uh, storage entity is part of a snap mirror replicated environment. And so all I did was use the NetApp driver. I defined an extra spec to leverage the NetApp specs, and I bring that up through. So now you can create cinder block storage that is replicated to another site for DR. And we'll have some blogs and some other uh, collateral around this exact use case, so how you can restore that too. We have the ability to do what we call a single file restore, so I can restore a particular object within that flex file, and we'll show you how to do that. So be on the lookout for some blogs and some other ideas. Thanks for your time. My time's up, and I appreciate you taking time for me. Thank you.